Hey guys, I'm Don Whitaker. Today we're going to be taking a look at part two of the Ben Hogan swing drill and how it can help your game. Hey guys, we've already covered the hip movement and the spinning of the hips and people thinking that's what Hogan did. People think you have passive arms in that transition. You don't. The arms come through independently as a motion for a lot of people. You might be really lucky and already do this, but it's unlikely, okay? So what we're gonna have a look at today is how you can apply that movement to your swing, which is most important of all. But secondly, having a look at the misconceptions surrounding this movement and how we can then start to put this into and fit it together with the correct lower body motion to get you in the look, obviously, first and most important thing of all, better golf shots. So let's take a look at it and how we can apply it to your game. So the problem we tend to see with guys when they are trying to do this Ben Hogan move is from the top, they're tending to leave the arms behind this way and the arms are always being dragged by the body. They're staying back. Now, the problem is the arms do have an independent speed and they've got to have because you can't generate as much power if your arms are being left behind here. And what this would then tend to lead to is a bit of a scoop to impact. So you can do that back there, hands stay backwards and then you've got to try and catch up to the ball with the hands and the club. So the club's gonna pass the hands, so you're gonna lose quite a lot of compression. There has got to be an independent movement. Now, we look at that video, obviously, and Hogan's doing this move, okay? But in order to actually get this move, what we actually see is that those arms are going forwards. We have a look at the video that actually looks at Hogan from like this top angle here. Okay, we'd notice that that left arm definitely moves off the body here. So We've got to have that individual or independent speed of those arms. They're not going to be coming through via the body. So they're not just going to be dragged through to generate speed because it actually is going to lose your power. So how can we look at you being able to apply this movement? So what we're looking at is from that top of the back swing, that left arm has got to get off the body, okay? And the left shoulder will clear away. Now, speed actually comes when the left shoulder gets away from the chin here and the club will then shallow, so the club head is quite a long distance away from the left shoulder. That means that it's got a lot of acceleration and a lot of speed to get back in line here, okay? Because that's where all of the club head speed will essentially come from. If it's being dragged, okay, what will happen is very quickly that club will go and that's now back in line with the shoulder. It's good. And then it's going to pass, obviously that's going to lose lots and lots of club head speed. It's also going to lose compression with the irons, create a bit of a scoop through impact. Really be difficult to get a lot of compression. So the other bit, you've got two ways of being able to feel this in, independently in the arms. Okay, probably actually three or four, but the two ways that I think would help you to start with. Okay, one is you're going to be trying to get the feeling that that left arm is definitely separating away the shoulder and the left arm is firing forwards, okay? So this will be feeling independent of the body. So that left arm will definitely go this way towards the target, okay? At the same time, it will feel like the right elbow is moving forwards towards the front of the right hip. The right hand can then be on top of the golf club, left arm can then be off the body. Okay, so let's imagine that you've got a wall right in here, okay? And what you'd want to do is, to get the feeling of how those arms are going to work is, take the club out just below the grip. Take it to the top, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna feel how those arms work forward, whilst also, as we said in part one, using a lateral motion of hips. Because if you've spun, you can't get independent motion of the arms because if you're so far in front of the ball, you had a fresh air it or top it, then you'd have to go like this. That's where the scoop, the top, really inconsistent strikes are coming from or a lot of shanks. See guys really struggling with shanks when they're just trying to spin the hips and let the arms be dragged through. So back to that drill just one moment. What we're gonna be doing is obviously it's held like this. From the top of the backswing, the left shoulder moves, left arm gets off the body, right elbow goes to the front of the hip. I feel like I'm gonna hit a wall there. So when the club shaft gets back to parallel to the floor, parallel to my feet, it feels like the butt of the club is almost gonna knock a nail into a wall. So it's right there so that will then give you the feeling of arms getting forwards whilst also creating a lateral motion see my arms are very much in front of my body from there everything can then begin to unwind around 
then the rotation can happen but it can't happen until you're over that left side but you cannot create that speed through into the club head if there isn't any speed in the arms it just can't be done so speed in the arms is individual or independent to the body okay some guys might automatically have tremendous speed in it and you guys can just go for it just use the body and it'll be amazing okay but i see so many people trying to do it that think that they want to have passive arms well passive arms genuinely don't exist because as we just highlighted there that's going to leave it backwards so make sure you're letting those arms have a speed you're going to try and get them in front of you in this direction okay you might even feel that that right arm is very slightly straightened not a lot but the right hand is then on top of the golf club and position so you're going to be able to compress the golf ball but those arms will move forwards and they will be independent but the shoulders are also rotating a little bit right here so we're creating more delay which is going to give us that club head speed cool. hope you've enjoyed that two-part series on this video guys i think some really good information obviously there's some misconceptions with everything that ben hogan did so hopefully there's something in this that can really help you if you've liked it please like the video subscribe make comments below and replying to the comments if you want to get in touch with me please do so via my website it's got my email and contact telephone number all my social media links are below please like subscribe etc on all the various platforms thanks a lot for watching and i'll talk with you again soon